minutes. You can start. Hello. Uh, first of all, I want to thank you, Newton, and all the organizing committee. And it's really an honor to be here and to represent Limp Gas and our team here. And we will present today our new technology, new research lines that are being developed in Brazil. So we are in the middle of the learning curve and we, we are not in the market yet, but we will be the first company to establish an innovation in this area. So this is uh, the main scenario now. And being an economist, uh, I will not have all the technical details. So something specific we can discuss later. The CO2 is being demonized today and it is completely wrong and CO2 is the gas of life and all ecosystems and living beings uh, needs CO2 to live and to get energy and photosynthesis and everything. So we are working to neutralize CO2, CO and other gases as well. But all of you know that climate change is happening and which are the main challenges related with climate change. So now I will discuss a little bit uh, about climate change, but I am not intend to discuss or explain which is climate change. I only intend to show you that the things are changing. So this is a graph that we have prepared using data from BP Statistics Review of World Energy 2011. And it's clear that in the, in the last 50 years, the, the amount of CO2 emissions has increased a lot. Uh, it's basically tripled in this period. This graph uh, is part of a study that I have made together with my friend Guilherme Lambais, that is a former UN Development Program researcher, and now he is a researcher in the Applied Economics Institute in Brazil. And we wrote a chapter of the Climate Change and Global Policy Regimes book, organized by Mr. Kerman. And we wrote about innovation and global to local energy governance. And this graph shows the total dependence in fossil fuels consumption to generate energy. In North America, probably more than 80% is generated by fossil fuel energy. And in Asia Pacific region, you can see the huge dependence on coal consumption. So it's really alarming to us, although there are many renewable energy being developed now, it is still quite small in this uh, scenario. Uh, there's no source here, but it's from the PCC, and it's only showing that the temperature has increased about one Celsius degree in the last century, and the sea level uh, has also uh, higher is higher now, and the northern hemisphere snow cover is going down. This is only the pre-industrial concentration and concentrations of CO2 in 1944 and 2005 and it's clear that the concentration of CO2 in the atmosphere 
is going up and the resonance of these gases in, in the atmosphere is about uh, 50 to 200 years in the atmosphere. This, these are some examples of greenhouse gas that we are working with. So we are working with CO2, SF6, uh, CH4, N2O, HFCs and PFCs. I don't will I will not pass through this because it's in Portuguese. So but you know that the consumption of energy uh, generates a lot of CO2, methane and NOx. So it's just to illustrate. Here this beautiful girl uh, this image shows a lot of uh, the amount of CO2 that we have been emitting in the last decades. Uh, the proportion of one kilogram of CO2 and according to International Energy Agency in 2011 we had 31 gigatons of CO2 emissions in the world and the energy generated by coal was responsible for 45% of this CO2 equivalent emissions followed by the oil 35 and natural gas 20. Here, uh, I have a laser point here. Yes. Okay. Thank you. So, in this general context, emerged Link Gas as the first Brazilian company working only in this field to develop new technology. Our vision is to accelerate the transition to the low carbon economy. And we have a pretty simple mission. We want to clean up the air from emissions, from greenhouse gas and other gas emissions. Our proposal, we intend to break paradigms uh, using developing and applying physical processes and physical innovations in replacement of chemical process and chemical technology. And we are pioneers here in the development of nanocatalysts and cold plasma reactors to treat gases. This is our, our work now. And we are a spin-off from Unicamp. We, my, my father was a former uh, researcher in the Glebe Batag Physics Institute here at Unicamp, and our partner is a scientist there as well. And we are incubated at CIATEC, that is the municipality incubator of Campinas. In 2012, we were selected by FINET in the Science, Technology and Innovation Ministry of Brazil as one of the 12 most innovative companies related with sustainability in Brazil. And with that, we were invited, we were invited to be exhibitors in Expo Brazil Sustainable and participate in the Venture Forum Brazil Sustentável and during the Rio Plus 20 in Rio in 2012. Last year we were selected as finalists in the Sustainable Business Modeling Analysis at the International Ethos Conference 2013 and we were one of the six uh, business models that uh, present their uh, ideas in the International Ethos Conference last year. 
There, there is increasing demand for innovations in emission reduction, this is clear, and the regulation and legislation induced, are inducing change in the federal and state and municipality levels in Brazil. The sustainability and corporate responsibility standards are improving, so there are many companies that are trying to implement new technology and new processes to replace the pollutant process they have today. And the available solutions by conventional process are inefficient or ineffective. So today, that is the main scenario. In this sense, we have two major lines of research, the nanocatalysts and the cold plasma reactors. Uh, here, I should say that we have three main innovations. The first is how we achieve this uh, structure that is the support for the nanocatalyst. This is not yet the nanocatalyst. This is the support of the nanocatalyst. We, we developed this process using only physical process. Here, this is a material that it was expansion, expanded, expansion, expanded from the liquid phase. So uh, these are only some examples of different materials you, we can use as titanium, uh, carbon-like diamond, bioglass, alumina, and others. The second innovation is how we put the nanoparticles and how we produce the nanoparticles in this structure. And this is uh, implanted by a physical process too, and it, it is implanted in the plasma and vacuum, uh, with a plasma and vacuum process. So, uh, together with these two new solutions, we can achieve the new nanocatalysts. And the third innovation is to apply plasma reactors. This is low temperature plasma reactors using vacuum and use the plasma to dissociate the gas molecules and to neutralize gases that are not neutralized in the nanocatalysts. So we will combine these two processes in one uh, equi equipment and that we want to do in the near future. These are some of the photos, uh, electronic microscopy, and here we are seeing titanium in a surface. This is uh, our sponge. This is diamond-like carbon. Titanium again. This is bioglass. This is zircon. Each material has a different structure, so very different. This is carbon, carbon fiber, and you can, we can use carbon to some process too. And this is clear that the contact surface of this material is huge. This is one micron and 500 nanometers. This is alumina and again the surface of contact is enormous. This is alumina too and alumina in other position, 
and Alumin again. And you here it's clear that the surface is you have many crystals and this is, the next slide is approximation from this one and here you can see that you we can use this as a really effective and cost effective catalyst. This is a plasma reactor and here we are producing the nanoparticles and we have using many kind of nanoparticles uh, like usual catalyst materials and other materials, new materials to, to make the nanoparticles and to test in our surface. So we produce the nanoparticle with known chemical uh, auxiliary process. This is another plasma reactor. This is plasma again. The, the image is not too good because of the luminescence. And this is our catalyst receiving the treatment and receiving the nanoparticles. Here, the, the sponge is receiving the nanoparticles and after this process we have the nanocatalysts ready to be tested in the future to be used. This is another one with a different plasma I guess in the plasma. This is another test we have been doing using uh, 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 structure with less con a surface of contact. So we in the plasma, this is used to show that although with this kind of structure, we have great results. So with that kind of structure of the sponge, we will have much greater results. Okay, and the future applications in industry will be in key sectors. Probably the most important are um, steel, sugar and ethanol, uh, oil and gas, chemical and thermal electricity, and automotive. But we know that the automotive industry is very complicated. There, there are a lot of lobbies and there are only three or four co huge companies that are competitors in this field. So we don't want to enter in the automotive uh, until we will be established in oil and gas and thermal electricity uh, sectors. This is only an illustration uh, how it, it works uh, using the conventional catalyst uh, with inputs of carbon monoxide, hydrocarbons and nitrogen oxide. In the output we have water, carbon dioxide plus a little bit of carbon monoxide and a little bit of NOx. So that's the conventional technology and we need heat to the catalyst to work. So when we start driving the car, the catalyst is not working yet. With this new technology, we don't need any heat. So the catalyst is not related with temperature. And if you are attend, uh, you, you pay attention here, you have uh, the same, and the outputs are being water, oxygen, and nitrogen. And where is the carbon? The carbon precipitate as a dust of coal and 
This is the main operation. So all the carbon precipitate and when the molecule of CO or CO2 or HC breaks, the, the carbon um, connect with another carbon and then little particles of carbon precipitate. And here we will have to have a storage uh, process, like a simple storage uh, place to, to get the carbon. The technology evolution forecast, uh, this is empty here because we have to construct, um, we have to build the, the capacity to um, produce this in large scale, to scale up the thermoelectricity technology and this will be a great challenge for the next years. So we have now five years of research and development now, and we all already have um, prototypes of the CO, CO2, NOx, and SOx catalysts, and we we are trying to make our first we are trying to make our first pilot plant to treat emissions from a thermoelectric power plant in Brazil now. So probably the first pilot uh, will be installed in the next two years and the first industrial plant will be installed in 2017. In 2018 and 2019, we expect to go to US and China that are the main markets to this kind of solution. Our partners, José Lima Gonçalves, that's my father, he is postdoctoral in the Center for Semiconductor Components here in, at UNICAMP, and he worked uh, 27 years in the Physics Institute of Unicam, dealing with gases process, uh, hard dose gases process, and other gases as well. Me and Carlos Salles Labert, our, our expert, he is the mastermind behind all this kind of technology and he, 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 he is the best applied physics uh, that I know and he he's a great science here in Brazil and he is the expert in the surface treatment and vacuum and plasma technology process. And we also have Carlisle Antonio Cunha that is our engineering and he is trying to get the small scale technology and scale up to an industrial scale and he's trying to, um, to establish the equipment and to structurate the future industrial production. So that's it, and I want to thank you all, and I'll be glad to respond to your questions.